you're welcome once again and i trust everything is fine with you as you prepare for your exams it's my prayer that the good lord will continue to grant you with more wisdom to be able to revise and also write whatever that you've been able to learn i'm going to take you through the informal fallacies the informal fallacies so um last week we were able to do the causa causa and then the logistic fallacies of which i explained to you what for so good proctor hawk is um overlooking or underlining a common cause genetic fallacies and then the rest i explained the syllogistic fallacies that is a fallacy of what affirming the consequent the fallacy of denying the antecedent and then the last fallacy was um, false hypothetical syllogism so i explained these things to you and that was the end of session nine so session nine all the videos are ready you can check my channel and then you watch all those videos. I explain everything. J um J S Mills method of agreement, the concomitant variation, the um method of agreement, method of difference, and then joint method of agreement. I explain all those ones. Then the syllogistic fallacies, and then the cause, okay, which is the proximate cause, the causal cause, the um, that is the, and then the rest of the topics. The rest of the topics too, I explain them to you. So, um, causal reasoning, I'm through with causal reasoning and all the topics, the syllogisms. But as you prepare for your exams, please pay attention to some key de um, some some key details. Okay, the examiners will like to trick you. So, make sure you know what a modus ponens is, and then fallacy or fault denying fallacy of what affirming the consequence know the difference okay and you have to also know the modus to lens and then the fallacy of what denying the antecedent know the difference hypothetical syllogisms and then the fallacy of what um fallacy um a false hypothetical syllogism you should know you should know how to form a disjunct a sentence in a disjunctive form know all these things and know the the causal reasoning, know everything about these things. And I, I think it's really going to help you because the questions that you are going to get, it will be similar. So if you know the difference, you won't struggle in identifying your questions. Now let's um, do something. Today is the informal fallacies. And under the informal fallacies, you have what? A fallacies that manipulate language. Under the fallacies that manipulate language, we have equivocation, we have pseudo precision and then we have what we call secularity and then we have a fallacy that manipulates language so under the fallacy that manipulate manipulate language to we have grandstanding or appeal to them appeal to what the masses or the consensus we have ad hominem we have appeal to illegitimate authority we have appeal to pity we have appeal to force or threat and then genetic fallacy and then appeal to our data we have hasty generalization we have misplaced vividness and then the last topic that we'll be discussing today is going to be semi-attached figures so these are going to be our topics for discussion today and as i explained to you the fallacy um the fallacies that uh, manipulate language fallacies that manipulate language that is what we are going to do now and the first is what equivocation equivocation um you've learned that one in session three already you know what equivocation is session three and then four you know what equivocation is but I would like to what, explain to you for you to get the understanding. When you talk of equivocation, is when you are using what different meanings of what one word. Pay attention. Using different meanings of one word in the same context as they mean the same thing without notice to your audience. Okay? So when you use what different meanings of, of what one word in the same context, it becomes what? 
equivocation. It becomes equivocation. Let's look at this, this example. Let's look at this example. I don't see why women are always complaining that they do not enjoy the same freedom as men do. It is what? A free country. So what, what is the problem? Every, everybody in Ghana here is free to do what they like. Now, the emphasis is on what? Free. Okay? So the person tried to what? Use different meanings for free. And that is what we are seeing here. So the first one is that it says it's what? A free country. It's what? A free country. And secondly, the person says he don't understand. Um, so every um, everybody in Ghana here is free to do what they what they like, and it is what equivocation. Let me try and get you um, some examples for you to understand it well. Now let's look at let's look at this example. Let's look look at this example. Okay, another example too. I don't see I don't see how you you can say you are an ethical person. It is so hard to get it is so hard to get you to do every, anything. Your work ethics is bad. Now, the equivocation or the underlying word here is what? Ethical, ethical. So you see that the person try to use this word um try to give two different meanings to what the word ethical so you see i don't see why you say you are ethical person ethical person here and the second one says that what your work ethics is so bad so one word trying to what use it in different ways okay and it becomes what equivocation the second one says that sure philosophy uh, philosophy helps you to argue better but do you really need but do you really need um to encourage people to argue okay so it helps you to give argue better and the second one says that what the second one says that what, um do you really need to encourage people to argue when you see in your exams they'll give you some some um some things like this so Anytime you see something like this, then you should know that you are talking about equivocation. It's just a matter of what? Identifying the sentences. They won't ask you to write a sentence in equivocation form, okay? But they'll give you the expression. Then you identify it for them. That is how the exams is going to be. So please pay attention to the equivocations. That is, that is how they are. Now let's look at the second topic that is secularity. Secularity or begging the question. When you talk of begging the question, this one is one of the cheapest or one of the easiest topics in critical thinking. When you say you are begging the question, is what when you are explaining or defining or giving reasons by merely repeating the um, the very word or claim as you are trying to what explain so when you repeat one word more than twice in your definition it becomes what secularity or begging the question let's look at let's look at let me give you an example computer is computer is a device for what? computing i don't understand what a computer is i asked you to explain computer to me and you said computer is a device for computing so if i don't understand someone who doesn't really knows what compute computing is will find it difficult to get the concept computer you get it so you are using computing to explain computer and becomes a secularity or begging the question now let's look at let's look at another example if i say a driver is someone who knows how to drive and drives. It is secularity or begging the question. Because I don't understand I don't know I don't understand the concept of driver. And he said what? He's a person who knows how to drive and drives. So it becomes what? Secularity or what? 
pegging the question. Another example, if I say uh, um, humility, if I ask you to explain humility, and you say humility is an act of what? Being humble. I don't understand the, I don't understand the definiendum. Okay? I don't understand the definiendum. Or, or, or my, yeah, I don't really understand it. And I ask you to what? explain it to me. And you are using different, um, you are using the same word to ex explain it to me. Let's look at the example here. The example here. It says that the belief in God is universal because everyone believes in God. Yes, so believe. I don't understand what believe in God, and I'm asking you to explain it. And you see what believe in God is what universal because everyone believes in God. It is what secularity or begging the question. Now let's look at the pseudo position. So this is what also known as what mathematical mystification, or using mathematical figures to give an is, an impression of what precision or exactness to a term that is already what vague or imprecise. So, if you use a mathematical concept, or if you use what? A mathematical mystification. Or you use a mathematical figure to impress someone. And to, to, to believe that um, your conclusion will be true. That's what we call it. That is what we call a pseudo precision. A pseudo precision. Let's look at it. And um, mostly, it has to do with what? Um, you using a mathematical um, figures to impress someone on what? A vague concept. Let's look at this example. 99.65% of COVID-19 patients are spiritually motivated. The question here is, who is a spiritually motivated person? It is vague. Such concept is what? Vague. But the person has what? Added a mathematical figure. Okay? A mathematical figure, which is what? 97.5% to what? To a vague concept. To make you what? Believe that it is real. So this one, we call it what? Pseudo precision. Pseudo precision. Um, when you talk of vague, it's something that is not really clear. I ask you, when are you coming to visit me? And he say very soon. When you tell me very soon, it means that it can be today, it can be tomorrow, or next year. So the day you have given to me, you are not being precise here. And that is why we say it is what? Vague. I ask you, Minister, Honorable Minister, when are you doing or when are you constructing a, a road for us? The minister will say, plans are far advanced. Plans are far advanced. It is what? It is vague. Because he has not given you timeline. When? Is it 2023 or 2022? 2023, 2024, next month, this month, when are you really going to do it? So, that is how they concept it. So when you, uh, when you add a mathematical figure, something in a, something in a percentage form or, or how you present it, it becomes what? Mathem um, pseudo precision. Now we are done with what? Pay attention. The three that we did, the secularity, uh, pseudo precision, and then equivocation, they all fall under what? Fallacies that manipulate language. Pay attention. They can give you a sentence in. They can give you a sentence in um, a pseudo precision form, and they ask you to identify the fallacy. But they won't bring the pseudo precision. But they will bring um, fallacy that manipulate language, fallacy that manipulate data, and fallacy that um, that change a subject. So you know that you are talking about fallacy that. Um, manipulate language okay and if it comes in what equivocation or secularity, uh, secularity form you know that it is still what fallacy that manipulate language 
Now let's look at the second topic. Okay. This is the most interesting topic. I, I want you to pay attention to that is what fallacies that result um fallacy that result from what changing the subject when you try to change the subject. So under changing the subject job subject we have what we have um six topics under it. Six fallacies under fallacies that change the subject. Fallacies that change the subject. One is what? The first one is what? Grandstanding or appeal to the masses. Appeal to the masses or appeal to the consensus. Uh, for me, you look at the 50 questions I uploaded recently. You could see that I, I just tried to play on your intelligence. There was one that um, is what? A fallacy of fallacy of denying the antecedent. But I didn't bring denying. I said fallacy of negating the antecedent. You get it? So, and then there are some concepts that are, you go through my past questions, the past questions I gave, the questions I said for you. There were some questions that I said you should identify um, the statements, whether it is, it is a verifiable, confirmable. You know, I know that verifiable is the same as what? particular statement but if I say particular statement it will be easy for you to identify so I, I brought what verifiable statement just to just to what confuse you and that is how critical uh, um, critical thinking examiners always also do mm, they always like to confuse you so they may not bring the, the grandstanding but you see something like um, appeal to what the cons appeal to consensus or appeal to the masses you should know that they are all the same they are inextricably intertwined now let's look at this topic let's look at the grandstanding when you talk of the grandstanding or appeal to the masses. Appeal to the masses. It is what? Instead of what? Instead of giving reasons why we should accept your claim, you point you point to how very many people believe or embrace that. Okay? So instead of you to give reasons to, 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 to back Patress your argument. You rely on others. Eh? Or you try to include others into your argument to make it believe that to make people believe that yes, what you are talking about is so true. And that is what what we call what appeal to the masses or appeal to consensus or grandstanding. So instead of you giving reasons why we should accept accept your claim, you point out on how many um, people believe or embrace that when we ask you we ask you about your view on corruption okay we ask you on your view on corruption then you end up bringing uh, 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 people you 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 you've engage in corruption and we ask you talk about it then you, you uh, try to bring Wyoming and some people that actually involve themselves in corruption and just to make it what look real i'm not saying why you involve himself in corruption or but this is one of the scandals and eh? this is one of the issues that actually um i mean trended in the country a lot of issues but um issues what happened which is which is what which was um i can say it was a perception okay it was a perception so that is how the whole thing is. So um, when we ask you of your view on something, then you try to include others. Let's look at this example. The footballers played only for themselves and for the cameras. The statement, the, um, these statements are correct. But what makes it grandstanding is that the person proceeded on by saying that they didn't play for the team. That is also his personal view. But what makes it 
What makes it what grandstanding will appeal to the masses is that ask everyone, has included everyone to it. Ask everyone. It makes it what grandstanding. The footballers what they play for themselves and for the cameras. They didn't even play for the team. That is your personal view. But when you try to include others into it, it makes it what appeal to the masses. Oh, so um, say what ask everyone. Now let's look at the ad homonym. Under the ad homonym, that is the second topic under the fallacy that changed the subject. Under the ad homonym, we have what? Um, um, this logistic what? Ad homonym and what? Illogistic ad homonym. But before then, let's look at what? Ad homonym. Ad homonym is also known as what? Attacking the person. So when you divert attention from what? the issue under discussion toward a person. Pay attention. When someone tries to divert attention from the issue under discussion toward to a person, then we call it what? Ad homonym. So when the person, um, and then I told you that we have two types of what? Ad homonym. The first of all, First of all, if the person attack a person in a negative and a destructive way, it is called what? Dislogistic. Okay, dislogistic word. Ad homonym. Dislogistic word. Ad homonym. So you always know that the word like D. So pay at, if you want to uh, d differentiate between the two, always know that D always, most of sentences that start with D are what? In a negative form. Okay, disadvantage, disagreement, some of these things are out. If it is in a post, so that is how it is. So just, I'm just giving you a formula on how to what, memorize it. So this logistic word, ad homonym, it is what? When you try to what, attack someone's personality. Example, he cannot be a good president because he's too short. You see, it's attacking the person's personality. It's attacking someone's what, personality. All right, so that is what this logistic ad homonym. And let's look at the other one. But if the attack on the person is pleasant and what laudatory, then it is described as what a logistic word ad homonym. So if it talks about the person in a pleasant way, then it's what a logistic word ad homonym. But mind you, if they come in either way, either this logistic or um illogistic it is still what ad homonym if you don't see any of them you choose ad homonym An example of what illogistic ad homonym is what we should listen to what kofi says about the product because kofi is handsome he comes from my hometown and he really speaks good english too so the person wants us to believe or accept kofi because he's coming from his hometown and so he's making what good comments about Kofi. So um and he believed that we should what accept Kofi's product because he's coming from his hometown. And he speaks good English too. So this is what a logistic word. I don't want him. Let's move to our next topic. Appeal to illegitimate authority. Appeal to illegitimate authority. This is what when you are diverting attention from the issue to an authority who is not a legitimate expert for the field or issue under discussion. When you are talking about COVID-19 um, issue here, the best person to give us a good uh, an advice on COVID-19 is what a health practitioner. If Ajako comes and tell you that uh, COVID-19 is caused by um, COVID-19 is caused by, um, um, I mean, death. Okay? That doesn't mean that he, he is not what, he's not the right person to give you such education because he's not what, a head person. The fact that he's a celebrity doesn't give him, that doesn't give him that audacity or that right to talk about health, health issue. Okay? But if it's coming from a doctor's mouth, then... Somebody like Dr. Frimpong Boateng, if he comes to say something about 
your heart issue because it's what a heart surgeon it has some how to say something about a heart issue or problem that um that we go through especially with the heart with that one it will be what very easy i can say that yes i'll believe it because it's what it's from an aspect but for uh, somebody like jackie appear for jackie appear to come and educate me on my head i it's it's what it what we call appeal to illegitimate authority let's let's read this example hiv is hiv hiv causes what is it must be so since george w bush said it and he is what the president of the most powerful military force in the world so the fact that uh, uh, george bush is what the president of the most powerful military force in the world doesn't give him that right to talk about health issue because it's not an uh it's not what a health what expect pay attention so when you see statement like this, it is what appeal to illegitimate authority. Now let's look at the the fourth one under the fallacy that changed the subject, which is what appeal to pity. Appeal to pity. When someone tries to appeal to your emotions, mm, for you to accept, do something for him or her, it is what appeal to pity. Appeal to pity. So let's look at it. Invoking pity instead of giving reasons why a claim should be accepted. Example, a young boy, a young boy to be judged after killing both of his parents. Please have mercy on me because I'm an orphan. Yes, you look at the child. He has had the gust to kill his parents. And when he was dragged to court, he's now saying that they, are, they shouldn't uh, jail him because what? He's an orphan. Okay, so he's appealing to the emotions of what the judges for them to what forgive him for the judges to what forgive him or or or, or temper uh, 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 I mean justice with what mercy. So that is what that is what we call what, um, appeal to pity. And then the next one is the next one is appeal to force or threat or fear or appeal to what principle. So when you see something like this, appeal to me if I'm setting a question for you, I'll just use that. I'll use consequences. Okay, appeal to consequences. I'll just confuse you. Okay, okay. That's I'm I'm, I'm interested in confusing people, and I'm interested in giving difficult questions too. Uh, just I just want you to think. And I just want you to know whether what I'm teaching you, you're paying attention to them or not. So I'll just use, I won't use appeal to force or appeal to threat. That would be easy for you to identify. But if I use appeal to consequence, no, it, 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 it doesn't really resonate with what the word force. Unless you think deeper before. So I'll just use that word. And then... <laughs> I'll confuse you. So pay attention. Whether you see appeal to force, appeal to threat, appeal to fear, or consequences, they are the same. Let's look at it. Instead of you giving reasons, you appeal to consequences or what will happen if a listener does not believe or accept what you believe. Okay? So um, you are a Muslim. And then you tell someone, oh, Allah will judge you if you don't read the Quran. Hmm? It is what? Appeal appeal to what? False or threat. Or appeal to fear. You are, you want, the person doesn't believe in your religion. But you say, if you don't read the Quran, God will judge you. If you don't go to church, you go to hell. It is appeal to what? False. Let's look at this one, yes, it is true that if you don't go to if you do, church, is very necessary. But if, 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 if you go to church, there's there's a work you need to do. Mm -hmm. Some people go to church, but their attitude is some way. 
but you don't look at what others do and also what uh, take certain decisions yes so when you go to church it will help you so that's why even the bible says you should work out your own salvation with fear and trembling so if you go to church it's for your own good you don't look at what the pastor or someone does because there are a lot of fake churches around the world and people look at these things and they get discouraged but you know i'm not serving human being know that you're serving god that's just by the way let's look at let's look at um the next the example let's look at the example under it you should support our SRC president on the on this demonstration otherwise people will take you for a coward right you have you will have no friends and after school you will struggle with getting a job <laughs> so the person wants you to what, join the demonstration but look at it it's threatening you in some way People will take you out. People will what, take you for a coward. And you will have no friends. And even after school, you struggle to get jobs. It's threatening you. It's appeal to threat. Appeal to force. Appeal to fear. Appeal to consequence. So let's look at the last one. Grandstanding, I explained it in the causal, uh, causal fallacies. That was the sixth one. Um, the genetic fallacies, when what? It's all about you accepting or re you accepting or rejecting rejecting something because of where it's coming from, okay? When you accept or reject something because of what where it's coming from, then we say it is what a genetic fallacy. A genetic fallacy. I buy you a phone from China and say oh, I don't like it because it's a Chinese phone. I buy you. I buy you, doctor. Kantanka scar, you say, oh, Kantanka de, or or before we de made the care yeah You know, Ghanaians, that that thing, that attitude is very bad. Someone is in your country doing, trying his best. Instead of you to support, you go out there backbiting the person. Ghanaians don't even cherish our, our our talent that we have. Look at the support we give to Nigerian artists, the foreign artists. If someone here is doing something, you see them going to social media, attacking the person. You know, we are, we are our own problem. Ghanaians, we are our own problems. We, we are not moving forward because of this. We patronize on uh, foreign goods more than what we produce here. You see a young entrepreneur trying to get things or make things better. The person will even send you his flyer. You push for him. But when he becomes successful, you will be the same person to see him. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. You'll be the same person to say that this person is my friend. Hmm? That attitude, we should change from it. If you see someone and the person is making effort, push the person. Okay? I like that thing. When I see you and you are trying and I have a support, I push you. Because that is all about what life. I don't know where you meet the person tomorrow. So we should try and what help ourselves. So you accepting or you going to write down the, your, your, they are, yeah, they're giving you two schools to choose as University of Lincoln and then Legon. You say, oh, no, University of Ghana is the best. Uh, University of Lincoln will be best because it's from what, America. could be that what Legon is doing here is even better than University of Lincoln, but you said you are going there because what, Lincoln is in America. So let's look at this. The new... Undergraduate system is a copy of what American university system. It must be it must be an improvement over what we had before. Yes. So with the new undergraduate system, the person is what making um, or giving his view on the issue. He thinks the new system will be what will be good because um, it's what an American undergraduate system that they are using or it's a copy of what the uh, American undergraduate system so it must be an improvement over what they had before it could be that what they had before was what good so that is all about transstanding now let's look at the third the last topic which is what fallacy fallacy that result from what manipulation of data manipulation of what data fallacy that manipulate data 
and that the father see that to manipulate data, we have what? History generalization. So, history generalization is also known as what? Insufficient evidence. Insufficient evidence. When you draw a general conclusion from sample that is considered insufficient, mm, it is history generalization. Most often when you are talking to the young men and women, you see them making a lot of history generalizations. Okay? Someone has dated two people and they all end up ended up cheating. They say, oh, Obiaye, a bad, okay? It is not so. And most, most, most women like making such conclusions. Oh, but boys, boys are the same. Boys are the same. Boys are the same. You know? Yes, but there are genuine ones among them. And sometimes you, the guys also make such conclusion, okay? They said your woman dump you, and you make, end up making conclusion. Oh, every woman like money. That is what that is a perception, but when you base on insufficient data to make a conclusion, it is what hasty generalization. Look at this example: all the three girl, all the three guys I have been with were cheats, so guys are cheats. Yes, but as a university student, you don't make hasty generalization. You base on sufficient data, then you make a conclusion on that. Okay. You don't base on one or two instances, and then you conclude for everybody. They are good people among us. You 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 had an airway boss. The person treated you bad. They say, "Oh, vegetarians are bad." That's not so. Okay, there are some genuine ones among them. So you should pay attention to this. And we have what misplaced vividness. Misplaced vividness. This is what a deflection of what attention by focusing too much on particularly sensational and provocative instances to support what your claim. Okay, sometimes this fallacy is also considered a fallacy of what insufficient evidence because a small number of what dramatic and vivid events are taken to what outweigh a significant amount of statistical evidence. When an emotional impact causes a person to jump to a conclusion or hastily generalize from their experience. So that is all about misplaced vividness. When what? An emotional impact causes a person to jump to a conclusion or hastily what? Generalize their, generalize from what? Their experience. Let me give you this example. Let's, let's read this example carefully then you will know what what and misplaced vividness is. Yes, I read the side of the cigarette pack about smoking being what harmful to your head. That's the surgeon's general opinion. Him and all his statistics. But let me tell you about my uncle. Uncle Sam has smoked cigarettes for 40 years now and has never been sick for a day in his life. He won, he even won the Milo Marathon in his what, age group last year. You should have seen him running from Tema to Dansuman. He smoked cigarettes during the award cer ceremony, and he had a broad smile on his face. I was really proud, and I can still remember the cheering. Cigarette smoking can't be a harmful as people say so you see that the person is generalizing based on what the person is what making judgment here based on what his emotional uh, uh, i mean impact or or it is uh, what is jumping to a conclusion to what because of what his emotions, and that is what we, we talk, we, we say about misplaced vividness. When an emotional impact causes a person to jump to a conclusion or hastily generalize from their experience, we see that the doctor's view is that they are saying that cigarette is harmful to your head, but the person is what jumping to a conclusion because of what his uncle's experience. Yes, it's your uncle, but have you checked others? Have you um, go, uh, gone to the field to see what cigarette has done to others? 
So such statement is what misplaced vividness. Let's look at the last one. That is semi-attached figures. Semi-attached figures. So when you talk of semi-attached figures, intimidating listeners or what readers with uh, numerical details that give an impression that a conclusion has what has been meticulously researched. When the reality when in reality the mathematical figures attached to the data only divert attention because the issue being discussed does not lend itself to a precise measurement. So that is all about semi attached figures. So you attach mathematical figures to, to, to make to give an impression that the research has what been meticulously what research or your topic has meticulously what been researched. And that is what we see it's what that's what we see a sentence or a statement is what um that is um, um semi attached what figures semi attached figures let's read this example Ghanaian university students are more intelligent than nigerian students a research team from boston college dis discovered that at Legon, over the three years period from 2001 to 2004, 75% of enrolled students had A in English, English language. But in Ibadan, over the same period, only 58% 58, 58 of the students had A in English language. So this is what, this is, this type of statement as we, it's what, semi-attached word, figures. It's semi-attached word, figures. Let's analyze it well, why it is semi-attached figures. The person is saying that university, uh, Ghana University is what? Is the best. Ghana University is what? The best. Why? Because uh, his research, he realized that for the past, what, three years, University of Ghana enrollment, when they check up, 75% of them had what? A in English. But when you go to University of Ibadan, it's only 58. So University of Ghana, um, universities in Ghana or univers Ghana's uh, students out, um, they are all intelligent than Nigerian students. But the research is only one word, English. If, even if you compare both universities, Legon and University of Ibadan, could be that in math, University is having a poor statistics, and Ibadan is what, having a better statistics. In physics, they have a better statistic than us. It could be that we only beat them in English. But you are basing on that what, make a generalization or a conclusion. So it's what, semi-attached figures. It's semi-attached figures. Because, and even with that, even if University of Ghana beat University of Ibadan with all the statistics, what about University of Lagos? What about the other universities in Nigeria? So if the research could have been brought by at least comparing 10 or 20 universities and you make a conclusion from that, we can say that, yes, it, is, it will be true. But based on only one university, and even not even one university, one course to make a conclusion, it was semi-attached figures. That is it. Now let's, let's look at this. The lecturer has stated your exams area. It says it's going, she says it's going to come from session six, session seven, session nine, and then ten. That is about the syllogisms, the um, the deductive and inductive argument, causal reasoning, and then informal fallacies. Don't worry yourself learning things that is not in the areas you've been given. Don't worry yourself. I've seen some people worrying themselves about the uh, emotive expressions and stuff. The lecture is clear. So pay attention to it. So the 50%, okay? If you are fortunate, you may get 50 questions or 40 questions. And it will be what? Feelings. There will be feelings. There will be feelings. There are some expressions they will ask you to complete it. There are some expressions they will only give you the conclusion, if you have my questions, you see I gave all of them. 
They will only give you the conclusion. They ask you to what in the especially the syllogism. They ask you to complete it. There are some two that um, will be what yes, yes or no, and then multiple choice. And there are some they ask you to even write it or identify it. So you pay attention to that. Please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, and God will continue to bless you. Have a nice.